In this video, we're going to talk about uh, two different types of correlation and the coefficient of determination. So uh, one subtlety of the correlation measure is that um, it differs as a function of your, the type of data that you're looking at. So what we were talking about before in the last video was interval ratio data. And um, so the correlation that you do for interval ratio data is called the Pearson product moment correlation or um, the Pearson correlation for short. Okay, and so this is the one where um, the correlation coefficient is represented with a small r. Um, so for ordinal data, which is data that um, do not have a numerical value but are but have an, an ordinal um, relationship among the levels of the variable. You can see the prior video on scales of measurement where it will explain the difference between ordinal and interval ratio data in more detail. So if you have ordinal data, which is generally called ranked data, the correlation is called the Spearman's rank order correlation. And that um, correlation coefficient is usually represented with an R and a little s subscript for Spearman's. So you've already seen examples of a Pearson correlation. Um, just for one more example um, would be salt consumption. Let's say we measure salt consumption um, as a sodium uh, excreted in the urine and then um, systolic blood pressure, so the relation between those. So you can imagine well, I think there is a positive association, so something like that. And then in this case, we could say the R would be about a 0.4. So this is Pearson because these variables are interval uh, ratio data. And so the Spearman's rank order correlation, as we said, is um, used with ordinal data. So an example of that would be... Um, say two uh, doctors rankings of the uh, disability level of a patient. So we might have um, Dr. A uh, on the x-axis and then Dr. B and so the um, patients would be here and the relationship between the two so the score that Dr. A gave and then would be on the x-axis and the square that Dr. B gave on the y. So these are rankings of Dr. A and B. So they're not uh, ratio interval data. They are ranked data, ordinal data. But at the same time, we still uh, look at it the same way and we assess, we can assess the relationship between the two variables in the same way by using a scatter plot. So you might want to do this in order to check, uh, you check agreement of Dr. A and Dr. B um, in their rankings in order to sort of validate the rankings. Um, and so when you uh, you would write this in the same way, so you have an R, but in this case you have the subscript for Spearman's uh, correlation, and then let's just say um, it's like a point three or so, so a medium correlation. And actually this looks like a pretty good, we'd probably have some uh, data points up here too so it's not so much of a line um, and so that's what it looks like so it's really the same exact process it's just um, indicated with the subscript s and it's good to remember that it's a different calculation for the correlation so what's important to remember about the <clears throat> Pearson and the Spearman correlation is that they capture linear relationships so um, if you sometimes you have um, two variables that are associated and they may be highly associated but the relationship is not linear so um, the Spearman and Pearson correlations are not going to capture the relationship between those variables or they may but they will underestimate the relationship so one example is um, BMI and mortality so um, there's kind of a J shape relationship between mortality and BMI. This is what's emerging. So at very low BMIs, 
um, for example, you will get um, higher mortality. And then if you get into normal and even overweight BMIs here, uh, the mortality is lower. And then as you get up to a BMI of 35 or more, let's say, um, mortality starts to increase again. So you can see that the um, those correlations that are just looking for a linear relationship, so I'm going to put that here, are not going to um, really capture that uh, this J-shaped curve. However, also you know that you can see that if you just look at a certain range of the BMI, so like if you don't have a lot of people who are underweight, which is true now in America, there aren't very many people who are underweight, you will, um, it'll look like there's a very high correlation between um, BMI and mortality that's kind of masked by the fact that you're not looking at the full range of BMI. But nonetheless, what's important here is that um, you remember that a, the Pearson and Spearman correlation are looking at linear relationships, but there are relationships between variables, um, variables that are highly associated that are just nonlinear and so won't be captured by the correlation. So another concept that's important to know is this uh, concept of the coefficient of determination. So we talked about a correlation coefficient. Um, you don't need to know how to calculate it, but so that's the R that we were talking about. Okay, so that's the um, number that captures the relationship, you know, the linear association between two variables, x and y. And so the coefficient of determination is just... Um, R squared, okay, so this is the correlation coefficient, and then the just squaring that value of the correlation coefficient gives you R squared, which is called the coefficient of determination. I've always just called it R squared, but this is the official name. And so what that means is that R squared is the percent of variance um, in one variable that can be accounted for uh, by the other variable. Okay, so um, let's look uh, at a visual of that. So uh, let's go back to our correlation, our relationship between blood pressure and salt intake. And so we can put a bunch of dots here. And so we'll make this like a correlation of 0.4. Okay, so R equals. Uh, 0.4, okay, and so the R squared would just be 0.4 times 0.4, which equals 0 0.16. 0 0.4 times 0.4 equals 0.16, okay, so that's 16. So what that means is that 16% of the variance in salt intake, okay, the variance meaning all the, these um, differences here, right between the um, these are individuals who are being observed so each individual we've measured their salt intake and then we've measured their blood pressure and so these this is the variation in salt intake that's uh, the how the numbers um, fall out on this axis okay and then this is the variation in blood pressure how the numbers fall out on this axis and so we know that a correlation is um, looking at how well these two are associated, so how well you can predict blood pressure by knowing someone's salt intake. And so um, by simply squaring the correlation coefficient, uh, that will tell you the proportion of variance in salt intake that can be accounted for by blood pressure, or vice versa, the proportion of blood pressure that can be accounted, of variance in blood pressure that can be accounted for by salt intake. Okay, so that's a very helpful... Um, measure. So again, 16% of the variance written it there for you. And so um, those are some extra um, things that you need to know about correlation uh, association. And um, But there's one more important thing, which is that correlation is not causation. So despite the fact that 16% of the variance in blood pressure can be accounted for by salt intake, okay, that does not mean that salt intake causes blood pressure, okay? So even when you have a perfect correlation, that doesn't mean that, the, that one variable causes another. So we're going to talk about that a tiny bit more in the next video.